Thank you very much for the beautiful opening to the service. So whoever you are and wherever you may be on your life's journey, whether you are a member here, whether you're a guest here, whether you've been here for previous Christmas Eves, whether this is your first one ever, whether you've never been to a Christmas Eve anywhere before in your lives, you are welcome here because tonight Jesus doesn't come as a little Jewish boy. Jesus definitely does not come as a Christian. Jesus comes simply as one of us. And that's the glorious message, that when God enters the world, he enters as one of us for all of us. And so we come together tonight to share in that noble message that we are part godly, that Jesus came into this world and showed us what we can be. We can be godly people. So let us celebrate not only Jesus' birth, but our rebirth. And so I ask you, if you are able at this time, to please stand for our first congregational hymn, which is the, also the opening hymn in candle lighting, O Come All Ye Faithful, verses 1, 2, and 4, read hymnal number 132. <laughs> Oh. 
Thank you, John. Thank you, Luca. That was beautiful. And Anthony at the console and me with the singing. All right. It is now time for the lighting of the Christ candle. And congregation, we do have a role to play. To a people longing for hope and yearning for deliverance, the prophet Isaiah declared, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Tonight we come seeking hope, peace, joy, and love. And we find these things in a child. God made flesh as a baby in a manger, a baby who is both the beginning and the end of our salvation, who dwells with us even now, our Emmanuel, God with us. We live as people in the in-between who celebrate the arrival of the light that shines in lost and broken places as we wait for the day when we will live in the fullness of God's kingdom. We light these candles as signs of our shocking hope, our just peace, our feast fierce joy, the love that trans transforms us and Jesus Christ, our wondrous light. May the light burning in our hearts guide us, comfort us, protect us, and tend us in all seasons and circumstances, reminding us that day and night, in the light and in the darkness, God is with us. Our salvation has come. Amen. Thank you, Irene. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, Ramon. Our chancel choir anthem this night is Only a Baby Came. Wait for a prince 
Thank you, Chancel Choir. We are truly blessed um, in our size congregation to have this many talented musicians. We are also blessed to have with us Reverend Linda. Um, she's a member of this church and she will lead us in the call to worship. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Can you hear me? Yes. The splendor of God is revealed among us. A child has come to change our ways and to attest to the holiness of creation. We who once walked in darkness have seen the light. We have given up the unnecessary burdens we carry. Authority has been assigned to the wonderful counselor. Peace and justice are promised through the birth of a humble child. Divine, Divine power is revealed through Jesus' birth in poverty so that no one feels excluded from the loving compassion of God. Let us revel in the birth of the Holy Child who breaks yokes and frees us, who comes to us as one of us to save all of us. Let the heavens be glad and earth rejoice. We declare that a Savior has been born Glory to God in the highest. In our unison prayer, God, God of all people and times, we gather to share in the light of Christ's birth. May your message of hope, peace, joy, and love resound throughout the world. May the incarnate love of the Holy Child bring harmony and goodwill to all creation so that people and nations they live together in lasting peace. Amen. Amen. And the prayer that our brother Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And our bell choir behind you will now offer, Lo, how a rose air blooming. verses 1 through 7, the birth of Jesus. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph 
also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was a descendant from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them at the inn. And if you are able, I invite you to please stand for our first carol, Red Hymnal number 110, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, verses 1 and 2. remain seated for the other carols if that's okay.
When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what, uh, what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. Please note we're in the blue window. Thank you. 
On this night, when we remember that Jesus was born in abject poverty, the donations that we accept tonight do not benefit this church. Um, every cent that you offer tonight will be shared with the Survival Center in Amherst and the Survival Center in Turner's Falls. So in honor of the Christ child, we may take care of children that are in similar circumstance. So not one cent is for this church. It all goes to both of those charities. Thank you for your generosity. Offerings are not brought up here into the sanctuary. They don't belong here to the church. They belong to the community at large. And again, thank you for your generosity. May God bless each and every one of you for everything that you've done uh, tonight so that we can continue to support those people in need all around us. May God's Christmas blessings as he enters into the world in poverty and homelessness uh, without anywhere to go in a defeated nation. May that Christ child inspire us to always look upon those who are hurting, who need a little extra help from us. May they all open up our heart to generosity instead of finding excuses of why they should be like that, what more they could do. Let us open our hearts and see in them the Christ child. Thank you again. And the, Christ, the last Christmas scripture shared tonight is John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. 
The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. And he was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or the will of man, or the will of flesh, or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and of truth. I'd like to again acknowledge the fact that the shepherds were out watching their flocks by night, and because of that, churches around the globe are gathering after sunset um, in the darkness of night, one of the longest nights of the year, to share with the shepherds and to be there as the angels announce with the heavenly chorus that the, ch the Christ child has been born. On this holy night, it is a night of wonder. As we sang in the hymn, uh, let me find it here, o only a baby came that our chancel choir offered. We were expecting, as all the Old Testament scriptures, for a thousand years, they were all expecting the Messiah to come with power and grandeur, and he would be like David again. And David, if you remember, expanded the borders of Israel by blood. He took his sword and he forced other people to give way so that Israel would have more. And that was the expectation of the Messiah. For a thousand years, they expected a king. They expected a, a soldier. They expected a person of power and prestige. And what an absolute surprise. The child, only a child born in a Bethlehem manger must have been to them and must be to us still. We still look in honor and we reverence power. We still look in honor and reverence wealth, status, and yet Jesus comes to remind us that it is the least among us whom God cares for because no one else will. And in God's name, we need to do the same. We need to honor the most humble, and by doing so, we raise us all up. On this Christmas night, when we just enjoy the darkness outside and we break forth through it with the light of our faith and the light of this congregation, Think about how the light of this place can shine out into the world if we really take that message seriously. And as we encircle this sanctuary, this safe place, in the light of silent night, you know, take that feeling that you have here as we darken the lights of the church and we just sing silent night to a candle. Take that mystery and that warm feeling that you have as you stand by your friends or neighbors or family members. Take that feeling that you have and let it break into the darkness that is in the world. It is just debilitating to think about how much violence there is out there, how much hatred there is out there, how much division there is out there. The world, more than ever, needs what we and Christmas talk about today. May that Christ candle's light shine through us into the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So at this point, I'd like to offer a benediction, and then we will all stand, uh, take the, uh, the silent night handout with you, with your candle, and we will circle the church. Holy God, on a wondrous night, you sent your Son to take on the frailty of our human flesh in order that all may come to realize the sanctity of creation in each precious life. You sent angels to herald Jesus' birth in Bethlehem and a star to proclaim it to the ends of the earth. Send us now as messengers of your good news and proclaimers of your peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are invited to please now rise to bring your candle in the words of silent night and move to an outside wall from the circle and form a circle around the sanctuary. Amen.